Now that all four of the other Isle 2 bosses have finally been bonked, the only boss remaining is Grim Matchstick. The good news is I was right about him being tougher than Wally. The bad news is... He's... Tougher than Beppy. Yeah. This match will get red hot. Phase 1 isn't what makes this fight hard. Although it is a pretty long phase, gatekeeping a decent attempt where I get to phase 2 by about 3 minutes, and that's only on a perfect no damage phase 1. Any damage taken here is an automatic restart. Trust me, your sanity will thank you once you get to phase 3. Grim's attacks in this phase are a 3 ringed beam that he'll shoot 2-3 to three times, with the last one being parryable. I usually try to parry it when possible to have more movement options at any given time, since without dashing, we're completely at the will of RNG cloud patterns. If Grim uses this attack, or is about to use this attack, I back up to consistently avoid it and move between clouds on different elevations to always have a safe escape. His other attack has him spit out fireballs in a wavy pattern. Before he reaches the damage threshold where his tail attacks you, he'll only fire one at a time. Once he does, however, two can be shot out at once and intercept each other, making the attack more difficult to dodge. I usually avoid this by being on a cloud at the top to just jump over the higher fireballs, or sometimes go between them if I don't have anywhere else to go. Pausing often helps with the latter. His tail will start appearing at the bottom of the screen after 12 whetstone hits, and without it getting in the way, those first 12 hits are pretty free. Between attacks, you can get two safe hits as long as you have clouds to land back on. All you need to avoid is his mouth's hitbox, which is pretty easy. If you're greedy, it's possible to get a third hit and back off right before he shoots his first eye beam, or wait for him to pull back to charge up a fireball and hit his moved hit slash hurt box. The eye beam hit is much riskier, so I don't recommend it, but the fireball hit is very consistent and even allows you to get another hit in between fireballs as long as the tail isn't in the way. Once the tail starts appearing, I play a lot safer and stay back if I know it's about to enter the screen. This way, I'll always have room to move between it, the clouds, and whatever attack Grim's doing. This is where you'll also want to take advantage of Grimm's attack pattern, almost always switching between his two attacks. Although, keep in mind that he rarely uses the same attack twice in a row, so if that would ever put you in a bad situation, just back up and play it safe by missing out on an attack or two. It's worth mentioning that damage from this phase carries over to the second one, and Grimm can't progress phases if he's in the middle of an attack, so you can count 41 hits to make you one away from phase 2 and stop hitting Grim. Wait until he just starts using the fireball attack, since this gives you the most opportunities to hit him, and just keep going until he moves off screen. Although this is optimal, I personally find it too tedious, keeping in mind that it prevents me from talking or reading chat much on stream, and most attempts have me take damage somewhere in this phase anyway, forcing me to restart, which makes it feel even worse to lose. Phase 2 is one of the hardest phases we've seen so far in this challenge, and I'd love to say it's the reason this fight is the hardest one yet, but that honor belongs to Phase 3. Yes, I think it's worse than Beppy Phase 3, so it's super funny that there's another really difficult phase right before the worst one. In this phase, Grim is on the left side of the screen, summoning fireboys that walk along his tongue and lunge at the player. We'll talk about this funny attack later. We've got bigger issues right now. Namely, hitting the dang boss, I mean jeez. At first, I thought my only chance to hit him was to wait for fire to stop shooting from his nostrils, then going for a hit on his back. This strategy was terrible, however. Since the smoke from the nostrils still damages you for some reason, greatly reducing our window for a safe hit. The other major flaw with this plan is the cloud RNG. 
I've already touched a bit on how annoying cloud RNG is in the first phase, but in each phase it gets so much worse than the last. Here, we need clouds to align to be close enough to attack right as the smoke goes down, and then another cloud to land on too so you don't just fall into Grim's hitbox, adding a lot more RNG to every single hit. Thankfully, I found a much more consistent strategy, and I definitely don't have to do something similar in Phase 3. <sighs> Instead of going behind Grim and his nostrils, fall down a cloud and parry off of his mouth. This is much easier said than done, but it's also significantly better than whatever I was doing before. The main issue with this strategy is the jumping fireballs. Not only are they already one of the most difficult attacks in the game to dodge in general, but they almost perfectly counter our offensive strategy. The best way to dodge them is to only go for attacks while one isn't lunging or already jumping at you. I usually split my focus between Mugman, Clouds, and Grim's Tongue. Once you hear, focus your attention on that fireball so you can see which direction it's facing. This will tell you which direction it will jump so you can dodge accordingly. The most common and safe dodge you'll do is being on top of a cloud and jumping towards the direction the fireball is coming from, which will almost always give you ample time to get completely out of its way no matter the random arc of the fireball's jump. If you're on the middle or bottom clouds, this is usually good enough to get by too, but there are some dangerous situations where predicting the wrong jump arc from the fireballs will get you hit. So of course we'll be playing around that as much as we can. Pausing usually helps you dodge no matter the arc, but if we're on the bottom, sometimes all you can do is duck under a fireball's jump. I recommend staying cautious about being on the bottom, since sometimes a cloud will be just low enough for a fireball's hitbox to graze you without it even jumping. The most common way to get hit by these dudes is right before or after pairing off of Grim. If they're feeling extra mean, they'll lunge right as you drop down a cloud, and sometimes you'll have no other option than to whetstone Grim to not fall off screen. Right after a whetstone hit, the small arc can parry you onto a middle or bottom cloud without enough distance or options to reliably dodge fireballs, so we'll always be ready to adapt to the situation when going for attacks. Speaking of attacks, there are two main types of attacks we use here. The most common is falling down from a cloud above Grim's mouth and parrying off of it. The second type, that I only go for when the clouds align, is a short hop from a bottom cloud. After enough practice, I reset if I take more than one damage on this phase. Though at the end, I started resetting when taking any damage sometimes, since phase 3 is bad. Really bad. But we're finally done with phase 2. Oh, I should probably talk about that. As soon as Grim transitions from phase 2 to 3, the mouth hitbox moves forward a bit. I don't actually know why it does that, since he has a hit slash hurt box behind him during this phase anyway, but weird hitboxes aren't really a surprise at this point, I guess. At least you can avoid this by keeping track of how many hits you've gotten on Grim for Phase 2, and making sure that the final one puts you on a cloud above it, or you can jump over it if you've got enough room. The upside to this is you can get about 4 hits on the moved hurt box, but I actually preferred not risking it since it doesn't have a good visual cue, and Cloud RNG more often than not got in the way. Now that we're officially in Phase 3, the real challenge begins. Grim still has his hurt box next to his bottom head, but getting clouds in the right spot while avoiding his heads and attacks is way too inconsistent to consider. So we'll take the marginally better option in the hurt box behind Grim. What sucks so much about this or, well, one of the many things that sucks so much about this is we're completely reliant on cloud RNG. In order to hit Grim without taking damage from one of their heads, you need to jump from a cloud that's high enough on screen. 
Then you've got to land back on it before it gets too far away, which is pretty tight without the safety net of a dash. When doing the hit, the best visual cue is behind the top head size, but keeping in mind that the heads constantly move, it's mostly something you'll just practice and get a feel for. You can also use tape strats like I did with Beppy, but I stopped doing that since I had to keep taking it off and putting it back on. Yeah, this fight took a while to beat. Needing to get good clad RNG and a couple of precise jumps makes this hit hard enough that I take damage sometimes. But the worst part about this phase is undoubtedly Grimm's attacks. Their main attack is shooting out fire orbs. What makes this so bad is that we're still reliant on clouds to jump between to dodge these. You'll have to pay close attention to where the clouds are so you can decide the best route to take. This means you'll always need to keep in mind where you can safely jump to as soon as a fire orb gets shot to your current location. So if Grim shoots while you're on top, you'll usually want to fall back down to a lower cloud and make your way back up as they can shoot fire orbs almost back to back if they feel like it. Sometimes you'll have no choice but to jump towards Grim when they're about to shoot if the cloud you're standing on is going off screen, so just try to make it as short a hop as you can, or ideally prevent that situation from occurring if possible. The back-to-back -back shots are the worst case scenario and you'll usually have to go between them or back off from your jump entirely. If you're in a position where you have no other choice, you can parry off of an orb, but this will cause it to explode in the four cardinal directions and likely hit you or put you in a bad position. Their other attack has Grim's middle head become a flamethrower and after a short delay, shoot it two times. This one is pretty easy to dodge. The only thing to look out for is to pay attention to where the clouds are, since if you're not careful, you could be on a cloud moving off screen and realize too late you have nowhere to go as you can't always jump from one cloud to another without dashing. You can also stand on a bottom cloud safely and sometimes ducking on a middle cloud is safe too. The worst part about this phase is that it's completely random if we'll be able to go for an attack, which we exclusively go for when Grimm's using the flamethrower attack, as they can't shoot fire orbs directly into your mug head during this time. I don't know the average, and I really don't feel like counting it or looking at Grimm ever again, but I'd guess I could only go for an attack roughly every 3 or 4 flamethrower cycles, making this phase so long and difficult. And of course, the longer it goes on, the higher chance of getting bad RNG or just simple human error. And there is no better feeling in this world than taking damage 30 minutes into a fight, only to realize you're just halfway through the hardest phase. But there really isn't much else to talk about, as this phase is mostly about endurance, and near the end becomes more about not losing your mind than gameplay, so let's skip to the part where I slay the dragon. What? I was way up. I can have like four hits left or three hits left. No <laughs> The dragon is dragged on, baby! No way! I was so off! Why was I so We did it! Okay, predictions for time. I'm gonna say 61 minutes and 12 seconds. Let's go! Oh my god, we did- Wait, was I the only one off there? What the heck? I was so off! I was, I was like, when I got hit the second time, um, that was like a really dumb, like, my bad. I was like hallucinating that late into the fight. Like, I was thinking there were clouds where there weren't clouds. And like, <laughs> like, I was genuinely going insane. I didn't say anything, because then you guys would have known. <laughs> Oh my god. What are some other lines? We've got time. We'll be here for a while. Anyone else got some lines? Some some comebacks? 
Oh my god. I can't I was so off. Why was I so off? Was there anyone else off who just won history? Oh my god. A few years time? Yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll break the timer. That knockout scared me. I haven't heard that sound in a long time. Bro, I was terrified. I was literally, like, the reason I got hit the second time, too, is, like, when you're this far into, like, a good attempt, it, suddenly everything itches. Like, your eyes itch, your arm itches. It's just, like, and then you just notice every every part of your body, and you're like, oh, that, that, oh, I gotta blink. Oh, better remember to do that. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I'd keep the fight going, but I didn't want it to drag on. Thanks, I, I, whoever said that. Uh, random words, welcome. A lot of people just showing, I guess, because that was a... Uh, did you guys like the me not talking attempt? Okay, um, so it was longer than an hour. So I'd say um, I, I was very justified in going insane. 68 minutes and 26 seconds. I hope that'll be the longest time. Uh, let's hope so. What do you think? But thank you so much, Joseph, for the $9.99. This deserves a donation. Thank you so much. And hey, I can use the new YouTube feature, Fan Funding, to thank the people I missed. Um, Grover, thanks for gifting another membership. Who got it? Spartan, welcome to stream. Thanks for a $2 donation. Let's go. Oh my god, I can't believe it's over. Oh my god, November Joy, thank you so much for the $10. Hard to believe I was here. Take this for the unforgettable experience. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not gonna forget that one. Oh my god. Thanks for watching. The IL-2 video will be up soon after this, and include the running guns and tier list. So, subscribe if you don't want to miss it, or the IL-3 streams.